Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is something which I'm very passionate about. And that topic is called as the next mobile is the automobile. Now, why am I making that statement? I'm making that statement because the smartphone that you're holding in your hand is extremely powerful. This is the device which now is almost a supercomputer. And the automobile, like a car for example, is slowly but surely approaching the same level of smartness, complexity and utility as that of your smartphone. It is becoming more and more intuitive, easy to use and intelligent, just like your smartphone experience. So let's get started and try to understand what is the technology overview which is powering this transformation. Good. Software defined car, next mobile is the automobile. So the key concept which I want to introduce right in the beginning is what is called as edge computing. Edge computing is everything that is done on the device such as a smartphone or a connected car, a connected truck or a connected bus. And the other term which you're very familiar with is cloud computing. Cloud computing is what is powering the world. This is what is helping us to move forward despite the pandemic. Yes. And cloud computing is offered by many world companies, global companies such as Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, IBM and many more. And edge computing, in the case that we are going to discuss today, we are going to be talking about the smart car. What is the car that we are currently using and that is being built for the future looking like? Where is it heading and what does it comprise? So there are key elements within the software defined car. Apart from the physical mechatronic subsystems that exist in the car, such as body, interior, electronics and electricals, chassis, powertrain, there is also software by SIPS software. S stands for software. And that software, the architecture of that software and the interactions of that software technology and solutions within the automobile collectively is what I'm referring to here as the cloud computing. Oh, sorry, the edge computing, edge computing. And this is becoming more and more powerful as we speak. And thanks to the improvements in high speed technology of telecommunications, we are now transitioning from 4G to 5G. So <coughs> 4G gave us high speed broadband, more data throughput in the same amount of time in one unit measurement of time. And what 5G will give us is very low latency. What is latency? The time taken between the two communication pings from the device to the telecom tower. So 5G is all about low latency and micro telecommunications will be possible because of 5G. And 5G will make sure that telecommunications is not necessarily unidirectional or straight line oriented. It can be available, telecommunications can be available even indoors, not just outdoors. This is because in the 5G technology, we are moving towards a distributed telecommunications network where infrastructure in itself will be distributed within the smart cities and this infrastructure will be able to communicate 360 degrees, including indoors. 
and semi-outdoors. So that's 5G which is being rolled out all over the world. Now, what is happening inside the car? Let's try to understand that. The first device which is critical is the communications gateway and that is called as the telecommunications unit or the TCU. This is as good as your smartphone. It has all the functionalities to communicate on 4G and upcoming 5G. Of course, the older TCU models were working on 2G and 3G as well. So the TCU provides the gateway for communications and typically there are two SIM cards and these SIM cards are embedded, which means they are software defined SIM cards. You do not necessarily need to have a plastic physical SIM card anymore, which means that you can embed a SIM card in your factory anywhere in the world. And when the car is sold to the country, in that particular country, the dealer can configure to the telecom network that is prevalent within that particular region. And the two SIM cards because one SIM card is predominantly for the data traffic and for diagnostics of all the electronics within the car. And the other SIM card is particularly for navigation and mapping to make sure infotainment, navigation and mapping is carried out smoothly. That's why the data traffic has been split and the SIM card is dual. Now, there is also an onboard computer getting more and more powerful. And all of this is connected via the TCU, either 4G or 5G. And bits and bytes, zeros and ones is all about what a software defined car architecture is today. Now, operating system, just as your smartphone has operating system, and most likely it's Apple OS or Android that you're using or Windows. But in the case of the software defined car, increasingly there is a prevalence of automotive grade Android operating system. And this has been launched by Google a few years ago and is becoming rapidly popular. More than 200 car platforms around the world are already on Android auto operating system. That's extremely exciting because then the integration with the smartphone becomes a lot more advantageous and the HMI or the human machine interface becomes more and more intuitive. Which means that when you sit in the car along with your smartphone, it's automatically pairing and recognizing your activities. Now, apart from the TCU and the onboard computer and the Android operating system, there is an emergence of what's called as a domain controller. Now the domain controller's job is to make sure that it's communicating within the subsystems of the electronics in the car. And the electronics in the car is called as uh, is controlled by an electronic control unit. And the electronic control unit in the case of a software defined car is typically 125 to 150. Now there are 200 million lines of code and these ECUs are having what is called as software on chip that means they are intelligent there is a sense there is a lot of intelligence built into these ecus and they are now being built on iso 26262 the functional standard defined in within the automotive european standards so the connectivity between the ecus is emerging more and more towards automotive ethernet in order to reduce the number of cables that is contained within an automobile. You'll be surprised as to how many kilograms of cables are going into building your smart vehicle. Therefore, an automotive ethernet affords lesser number of cables, therefore lesser weight, but at the same time increases the throughput of data carrying capacity between all the electronic communication nodes, just as you have in your office or in your factory or even your high-speed broadband at home. So this is what is happening within the car. Now, the car is being connected through the telecommunications network to the cloud. Now let's take a look at what the cloud is supposed to deliver. Now the cloud, which is a distributed resource across the world, 
thereby enabling global connectivity, is connected 24 bar 7, 365 days to via the telecom network to the TCU and the onboard computer and the car or the automobile. And the computing on the cloud can deliver four uh, areas of use cases or four utilities, if you will. First is connectivity, which we've explained. Second is it can enable, based on connectivity, it can enable moving towards autonomous drive or self-drive. Now, according to the Society of Automobile Engineers, the classification of self-driving goes from level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. Level 5 is obviously completely self-driving of fully autonomous car, hands off and highs off. That is what is level 5. We are moving towards that. What you find in Tesla is level 4. That means it's activated for fully drive autonomously, but needs driver intervention for emergencies. And L5 are autonomous vehicles and they need not have any human intervention and they can take the decision with regards braking, acceleration and all kinds of maneuvering. We're not fully there yet, at least not in a public environment, but we will get there. And connectivity is the baseline in order to have autonomous driving. And then cloud computing can also provide shared mobility. That means mobility as a service, product as a service, platform as a service. And that is what has helped us to have business models which has been made popular by the likes of Uber, um, MyTaxi, Ola, so on and so forth. And you will see an increasing connectivity to multimodal transportation within the smart city environments that are being built. Which means, for me to move from point A to point B, the cloud will compute what is my best optimized mode of travel. So it will suggest to me on my smartphone how many meters I should walk or what cycle I should hire and then which metro station I should go to ride the metro, then get off the metro and then catch a shared taxi or even hire a car which I can drive to my destination. This is already commonplace in many cities in the world and we will also see this happening in India as we move forward. And finally, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, plug-in EV and hydrogen-based fuel cell, the new power trains which are moving towards the green zero carbon footprint is also being enabled by the cloud because we have to be able to calculate the distance to empty and the state of health of the battery powertrain in order to enable smooth electric vehicle mobility seamless across all regions in the world. Therefore, the cloud can enable and deliver Ks, connected, autonomous, shared and electric mobility. So the cloud in combination with the edge can make sure we have a working, efficient, effective, moving towards zero carbon footprint and interesting and enjoyable journeys being given to us every day by the intelligence that's working together from the edge computing and the cloud computing hand in hand, 5G accelerating that particular journey. This is what I had had for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Thank you.